I'm David. I like making photographs from unusual perspectives. Whether it's on top of a you know rooftop in downtown Denver, or maybe underneath a you know underground in a mine or something like that, I like t finding interesting perspectives and making photographs. Picture me a few years ago sliding through the internet, you know, browsing the front page of the internet, and I see, saw a photo like this, and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. Then I kept scrolling, kept scrolling, and I was like, wait a second, that was like really cool. So I scrolled back, and it turns out this was a photo from a weather balloon, and you know, this guy wrote a blog post, and I realized that like. I can do this, like holy cow. So luckily for me, this, this uh, post was written by a guy named James Coxon out of the UK in Cambridge, and he detailed everything about how to launch a weather balloon. I poured over that blog post like you wouldn't believe, and before I knew it, I was designing my own circuits, I was hooking up little weatherboard components to read temperature and wind and GPS and all these different things, and you know, I, I'd never programmed an Arduino before, I didn't even know what it was, and it turns out like, Weather balloon payload needed a radio system on board to beam its location back to Earth. Now I'm Kilo India 6 Yankee Mike Zulu. <laughs> I could do a whole other talk on ham radio, but that's not the point. But I, I kind of got in, like, not necessarily over my head, but it went on this journey of just discovering and, like, whoa, electronics and, like, GPS has satellites and stuff. It was really, it was a really great time of learning for me. And as I, as I kind of figured it all out, I realized that launching a weather balloon wasn't exactly rocket science, you know? So it turns out you just get all those bundles of electronics and you <laughs> put them into a box, you know, some sort of insulated box. Uh, put your phone number on the outside just in case. Uh, you, you put it all together, you know, it's got a tracking system, computer, whatever you put together, maybe a camera, exoskeletal animals, anything that might benefit from a, a trip to the stratosphere, 100,000 feet up. Then you get a weather balloon, you inflate it to about as big as I am in diameter. You fill it with a lighter than air gas, helium, hydrogen, I like hydrogen, it's more fun. And no, it's not hot. Uh, but you fill it up, and then you have this thing worth hundreds of dollars, and you do something crazy with it. You let it go. <laughs> then the first thing you think is, oh, shit. <laughs> Did I turn it on? <laughs> Every time. If all goes well, you did turn it on, and then the best part comes. And that's tracking the, your payload. And you get in, your, in, your, in the car, and you get all your friends together, and you shoot off down the highway and try to figure out where this thing is going to go, and try to like predict where it's going to land so you can go pick it up again, all the while tracking it with your antennas. And that's worth noting is that like you don't really have control over where it goes. This is a, a balloon, right? That you don't. It's not a quadcopter drone with your little RC unit. It's pretty much at the mercy of the jet stream and whatever, whatever other weather it runs into on the way up and down. If you launch from the front range in Colorado, pretty much anywhere, the wind's going to pick it up and it's gonna take it way out into the plains. I love the plains, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm also a nerd and I really adore cell service when I'm trying to find something with GPS and stuff. And Murphy's Law always takes over. If it can land in the middle of a field, a mile from the nearest road, it most certainly will. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Always bring water if you leave the car, too. <laughs> About two Octobers ago, I had the good fortune of uh, launching a balloon in New Hampshire in the, the White, Hit, White Mountains up there. And it was, as the leaves were changing, absolutely gorgeous time to be there. And it was a perfect launch. You know, let go, rose about 1,000 feet a minute. Balloon burst, came back down again. It was great. Kind of went out of, cert, you know, out of range a little bit, but it's okay. You know, we took the, the curvy highway and picked up the signal again, got the latitude, longitude, plotted it on the map, and realized it was literally on the top of Mount Jackson. Which is not a big deal for me with my Colorado legs getting to the top of uh, what the uh, <laughs> New, Hampshire, New Hampshireites say, you know, is a, a big forer. <laughs> <It's laughs> I, I don't want to get into details about these things, but uh, th these two things on the market are awesome if you want to get into this. The Spot and the GoPro, literally duct tape these two together, find a big enough party balloon, let it go, and with a little bit of luck and planning, you will definitely wind up with a photo that looks like this. And before I get into the rest of this, or, yeah. <laughs> um, my last launch was in April, and I wanted something a little different. I've got a million photos that look like this, so I wanted a photo of the Rocky Mountains and the Continental Divide. So I actually launched from Grand Lake uh, across the divide and, you know, flew directly over Long's Peak. <laughs> the April snowfall helped quite a bit. And, uh, <laughs> As we look at one more photo that's totally distorted from the GoPro, uh, this is from the same launch. Uh, I just want to say that, like, you know, a number of years ago, I was looking through the internet and I saw a photo that looked really cool. 
and now I have this crazy hobby and I'm a ham radio operator, all because I knew I can do this. 